Jack Roosevelt Robinson was a messiah of baseball. He was the first official African American to play Major League Baseball and by doing so stood up for civil rights and equality. Jackie was born on January 31st of 1919 in Cara, Georgia, being the youngest of five children. His mother, Mally Robinson, and father, Jerry Robinson, were tenant workers on the plantation of James Madison Sasser in Grady County. In addition, Jackie's dad left the family due to a troubling marriage, which eventually made the Robsons move to Pasadena, California in 1920. He was raised in relative poverty by his single mother, but became an astonishing athlete at John Muir High School. He played baseball, football, track, and basketball. After high school, Jackie continued his education at the University of California in Los Angeles and was lettered in four sports. However, Jackie never graduated, knowing that he would not get a job no matter what degree he took because of his skin color. So he decided to continue his sports career because he would have equal rights on the field against his opponents. Now that you know about Jackie Robinson, I will explain how Jackie took a stand in the history of baseball. Jackie played the game of baseball with a passion and a purpose. He never yelled or fought back at taunting fans, players, or coaches. His way of fighting back was by continuing to play ball. He was sent death threats and has been beaten by pitchers multiple times, but he still steps in the box and gets on base. Jackie figured out that the best way to give African Americans fair opportunities was by playing the game because the game should be based on potential, not race. So by having him play proves the point that it doesn't matter what you are on the outside, it matters who you are on the inside. The first time Jackie took a stand was when he was in the army at Fort Hood, Texas. He was arrested and court-martialed for refusing to give up his spot on a segregated bus. This action from Jackie is not really what he was known for, but proves the point that he is making opportunities for African Americans. He could have kept his mouth shut and moved to the back of the bus, but he took a stand for himself and for his race. Finally, it's baseball time. The main way how Jackie took a stand in history was during his baseball career. After he was discharged from the army in 1944, Robinson began to play professional baseball. At first he played in the Negro League, until he was chosen by Branch Rickey to play with the Brooklyn Dodgers farm team, the Montreal Royals. His rookie year with the Montreal Royals was cruel. Pitchers would constantly walk him or pitch at him, and runners sliding to second base would stick up their cleats at Jackie to spike him in the face. Despite his physical pain, Jackie was doing great. He led the league with a 349 batting average. In addition, he was promoted to the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1947. He made history as the first black athlete to play Major League Baseball. Mr. Rickey tested Jackie's abilities to withstand racial slurs and insults. He knew that the times ahead for Jackie would be rough, so made him promise not to fight back when confronted with racism. Again, Jackie's taken a stand by being the better man and not fighting back. Then in his first year with the Dodgers, Jackie hit 12 home runs and led the National League in stolen bases. This may not be important to people nowadays, but an African American that was great at the sport in his rookie year was putting a good example for other African Americans to play someday. After his baseball career, Jackie became the vice president of Chuck Full Nuts, a coffee company and restaurant chain. Also, he continued to help African Americans by sending letters to presidents for civil rights and equality movement. This letter was sent to President Johnson on April 18, 1967. In the letter, Jackie addressed that many Negroes from the Vietnam War are coming back home feeling as if, why was I in the war if I'm still treated badly? He also states in the ending paragraph that the president or his staff should press justice for all Americans so people won't be resorting to violence. His other letter was sent to President Eisenhower. Same thing, he addressed that African Americans have been very patient and deserve attention to gain civil rights. He even suggested to the president to urge forbearance from pro-segregation leaders. 
All of these reasons of how Jackie took a stand are unique in their own way. In his army service, he stood up for basic civil rights of his own. In baseball, he was a selfless player who ignored his distractions and played out. And finally, after baseball, he continued to be selfless by giving back to his community with equality and became a respected man from speaking the truth. Jackie's life has and will continue to affect others, no matter who those others are and what they do. In conclusion, the game of baseball was changed to have endless possibilities with endless types of ball players. All thanks to the Color Comet, who stood up for himself, civil rights, and the way how the game should be played. Colorless.